Hello and welcome to another Nostalgic Magic the Gathering video. So we're reaching the end of our journey through modern era sets. Uh, we're up to Eventide. And this is the last set that I have old product for. Um, I do have some other stuff but it's not uh, boosters. Um, and uh, it's not as, uh, as old as this. I mean this isn't that old. It, this came out in 2008. So a mere, what, 11 years ago? Um, and just to put that into to perspective, obviously this was part of a one of those sort of smaller blocks, as a two-set block, part of the Shadow Moor block. So we had Shadow Moor, which was also released in 2008, and that came out, I believe, in May. And then this uh, Eventide came out in July of 2008 and that was followed up with the first From the Vault product which was From the Vault Dragons and that came out in August of 2008 so there's quite a bit going on there you know we think about uh, the more recent magic releases as being quite you know, quite a lot coming out in a short space of time but there was um, in certain years there was quite a lot of product that get put out uh, 2008 also a big year for me. It's the first time I visited Nova Scotia before I settled here in 2009. So just uh, beyond magic, there was also a lot going on. Uh, at that point, I was, it really wasn't really paying an awful lot of attention of, of what was going on because I was busy with other stuff. But uh, yeah, interesting times in magic. So let's have a look and just think about some of the stuff that was in Eventide. So it's a small set, uh, 60 common, 60 uncommon, 60 rares. It had hybrid mana, untapping, minus one, minus one counters. There was also keywords and abilities like Chroma, Persist, Retrace and Wither. Because of the fact that this was a, a two set block, like a mini block. A number of the mechanics may have uh, appeared in the previous sets, but also the cycles. So even though I'd had 15 cycles, but seven of those are actually part of the Shadow Moor, uh, what was called a Shadow Moor block mega cycle. So they spanned over the two sets. The remaining eight to watch out for, in addition to the ones that were also in, in Shadow Moor. So the eight we wouldn't have seen previously in my series of videos would be Chroma Spells, Enemy Colour Hybrid Ability Creatures, so that would, that's where there was Hybrid Mana, Enemy Colour Hybrid Mana, in the Activation Ability on the card. Then we had a cycle of hatchlings, a cycle of hedge mages, mimics. So all three of those would have had the word in there, in the name of the creature. And we had retrace spells. There was a cycle of those, uh, common spells. Also a cycle of scarecrow artifact creatures called skullkins. So a cycle of skullkin. And some untappers, a cycle of untappers. Lots of interesting cards to, to keep our, an eye out for. We've got Helix Pinnacle, which was an alternative win condition. Um, Figure of Destiny, which was a sort of precursor to the level up mechanic. And uh, things like Still More Cavalier, which I think I've mentioned that card way, card way, way back when I was doing a series on uh, on deck building. So yeah, lots of interesting things to, to look out for. We'll uh, open up five booster packs this week, and then next week we get to the last five, and uh, we'll, that'll, that'll be it as for terms of this series goes. Obviously I'm gonna be doing other stuff on the channel obviously magic related I'm going to be throwing in a few videos again which aren't necessarily related to magic but about you know other other stuff that I'm interested in other stuff that I collect so we'll
take a look at these, see what we can find. Oh, actually one thing I forgot. Let's just quickly, because I know there's a number of price, watchy, price watchers who are interested in the values of some of these cards. So above $10 we have, and this is in order of most expensive first, we've got Bloom Tender, Helix Pinnacle, Balfour Liege, Glen Elendra Archmage, Deathbringer Liege, and Scarecrow. And they're all rares. The first of the expensive, or the, the Chase Uncommons for want of a better word, was Crumbling Ashes. That's hovering around five bucks. That's an uncommon. And the highest priced common is Slippery Boggle. Which is currently 171 according to MTGO Goldfish. So that just gives you some idea of what to look out for. Okay, let's have a look at this. You have to excuse my voice at the moment. It's one of the perils of um, international travel. Just been away on a nice break to Cuba, so. Always end up with something when you're stuck in a plane for several hours. Um, okay, so here we go. Skith, uh, Kithkin Spell Duster. Unmake was in this set. It's a very popular card that uh, has been reprinted a few times, I believe. Woodlurker Mimic, Cycle of Mimics. So one, black, green. It's a 2-1. Whenever you play a spell that is both black and green, Woodlurker Mimic becomes 4-5 and gains wither until end of turn. Flame Jab. It's got Retrace on it. So for a single red, uh, Flame Jab deals 1 damage to target creature or player, but you can retrace it. So you may play this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other costs. Snake Form. We've got a Battlegate Mimic. So for this one, whenever you play a spell that's both red and white, Battlegate Mimic becomes 4-2 and gains first strike until end of turn. Grazing Kelpie. Heartlash Cinder, which has Chroma on it. So with Chroma on this card, when Heartlash Cinder become, comes into play, it gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is the number of red mana symbols in the mana costs of permanence you control. Talara's Bane. Banishing Neck. So that's got uh, the... Oh, no, that's, oh, so I'm looking out for the untap. That's actually a tap symbol there. Uh, sends enlistment. And we have a rules card for retrace. Between our commons and uncommons. And we have Creek Wood Ghoul, uncommon. Swirling Spriggan. Siphon Life, which also has Retrace on it. So you can see the the Retrace would, appears to be always the same if you compare it to the other card. So you may play this card from your graveyard by discarding a land card in addition to paying its other costs. Oh, and there's the alternative win condition. So this uh, particular set had an alternative win con card in the form of Helix Pinnacle. It's a single green, has Shroud on it. And for X, put X tower counters on Helix Pinnacle. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 100 or more tower counters on Helix Pinnacle, you win the game. So our first common in the next pack, we have Puncture Blast, which has Wither on it, so it deals damage to creatures in the form of minus one, minus one encounters. 
Yeah, this is an instant spell that does three damage for two and a red. Dream Thief. Kiskin Spell Duster, which has Persist on it. So when this creature is put into play, the graveyard from play, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return it to play under its owner's control with a minus one, minus one counter on it. Harvest Gwynlian, which has Wither. Would lurk a Mimic. Cares about black and green. Durgar Assailant. So here's one of the Skullkins. This is Ant the Skullkin. For five, you get an artifact creature scarecrow. It's got an ability on it, so pay two, target white creature gains persist until end of turn, and it's a three three. Smouldering Butcher, which has Wither on it. Una's Grace also has Retrace. Beckon Apparition. And we have a Slippery Boggle. So it's green and blue for 1 1. Slippery Boggle can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. We have a Worm Token. And then at Uncommon, we've got Talon Rend. We have a hatchling here, we have shrewd hatchling. So we'll have a look at one of these. So three, blue red. Creature elemental, the shrewd hatchling comes into play with four minus one minus one counters on it. Pay blue red, target creature can't block shrewd hatchling this turn. Whenever you play a blue spell, remove a minus one minus one counter from shrewd hatchling. Whenever you play a red spell, remove a minus one minus one counter from Shrewd Hatchling. And it's a 6 6. And then another uncommon here Unnerving Assault. And our rare is Overbeing of Myth. So Overbeing of Myth does not have apparent toughness. So obviously that's dependent on. The rules text, so overbearing of myths, power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. At the beginning of your draw step, draw a card. Levitator, Edge of Divinity. So this was an aura for a cost of white black hybrid. Enchanted creature, as long as the enchanted creature is white, it gets minus one, minus two. As long as an enchanted creature is black, it gets minus two plus one. Hang on, what am I saying? Sorry. As long as the enchanted creature is white, it gets plus one plus two. And as long as enchanted creature is black, it gets plus two, plus one. So the recycle of these in the uh, in the enemy colours, I believe. Which was part of a, I think it was one of the ones that was part of a larger um, mega cycle across the block. We've got Fang Skulkin. Gift of the Deity. Rend Claw Tro with Wither and Persist on it. Puncture Blast, which we saw earlier. Kithkin Zillot. Drain the Well. Hot Headed Giant. Got an ant antler skullkin, smouldering butcher, 
another worm token and we have another hatchling so it would appear all of these the the different um, color combinations here again we've got a hybrid mana in enemy colors uh, they've got some sort of ability on them that was, which would be typical of that color combination and then the other other abilities revolve around removing minus one minus one counters based on the color of spells that you cast for both the colors that are relevant to the casting cost of the hybrid mana Razor Fin Abolisher, Indigo Fairy. Looks like there's quite a few cards in the set that either care about the color, the color, the mana color, or um, manipulated in some way. So our rare is Endless Horizons. So three and a white enchantment. When Endless Horizons comes into play, search your library for any number of planes cards and remove them from the game then shuffle your library at the beginning of your upkeep you may put a card from your card you own remove from the game with endless horizons into your hand We have another edge of the divinity, a hoof skulking, another unmake, wicker bow elder, dogar assailant, stream hopper, jawbone skulking. Raven's Crime, which has retrace on it. Trapjaw Kelpie. Nip. Gwilion. Tilting Tree Folk. We have a Goat Token. So our first uncommon in this pack is Flicker Wisp. Then we have a Savage Conception, also with retrace in it. An unnerving assault. Aha, I was hoping we would get a liege. So we have a death bring a liege. So this is two and then three hybrid black, uh, white black mana. It's a creature horror. There was a cycle of these um, across the whole block. And uh, in this set there would have been the enemy color ones. So other white creatures you can control, you control get plus one plus one. Other black creatures you control get plus one plus one. Whenever you play a white spell, you may tap target creature. Whenever you play a black spell, you may destroy target creature if it's tapped. And that's a 3-4. So very pleased about getting one of those. I was hoping to get another Chroma card just so I can talk about it. But uh, anybody that uh, may, anyone that may have noticed... Um, the, the obviously chroma is um, is a sort of precursor to devotion, which turned up in Theros. Admittedly, it was uh, tweaked slightly, but same sort of principle based on the specific number of coloured mana symbols on cards. Recumbent bliss, fang skulking, soul reap. Airy Ophis, I think that is, Cinder Pyromancer, Riverfall Mimic, a 
that's the blue red mimic. Talan oops Talara's Bane Banishing Knack Sends Enlistment Another Slippery Boggle Clout of the Dominus We have a Goblin Soldier as a token. Moving on to our uncommons, we have Soul Snuffers. Moonhold. Dustale Worm, which is 5 and 2 green for a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. And our rare is another Liege. So this one is the red-white one. So two and then three red-white hybrids. Creature Spirit Horror. It's a 2-4. Other red creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other white creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So all of the cycles had that on it, which were relevant to the... Um, all of the cards in the cycle had that on it, were relevant to its uh, casting colours. But uh, the the rule underneath it was different, obviously based on the on, on relevance to the colours. So, in this case, whenever you play a red spell, Balefire Liege deals three damage to target player, and whenever you play a white spell, you gain three life. So that's the last pack from there. That's a very interesting couple of lieges, which uh, I'm pleased about. Interesting set of cards. We had a Boggle in there. Um, and lots of cards that were caring about you know, the, the various two colour combinations. You can see it was a set that was very much focused in on um, two colour hybrid and it, it cared about um, colours and also there was a enemy colours in this particular set. Whereas the previous set, which was the... Um, and my brain has gone blank now. So with the... The, uh, the the other set in the block uh, that was uh, specifically cared about allied colours in there. So when we get on to the next set, and Shadow Moor was what I was trying to think of. Uh, when we get on to the next pack next week, uh, we'll have a look at some some more of this set. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.